Just let's, let's go directly now to the do part. So you decide you're going to do this loony thing of crossing the Atlantic. T tell me exactly how did you decide? What happened before that you made that decision you're going to do it? And bring me through the journey because I want to mirror people here that have dreams of building their business, building their life. How specifically did you do it? Well, I, I, I was working for 10 years as a commercial diver um, all around the world and I was working for the last few years of it in the North Sea. So I was um, working with a big company. I was kind of in a secure place within the job, which is very hard because it's, a, it's, a, it's a very much a contract sort of job. And I had a pension and a, and a savings plan and I had lots of investments and stuff like that. But uh, the price of oil dropped there, um, which is good for most people, um, a couple of or 18 months ago, two years ago, and we were made redundant. Um, and I suppose that led to my decision really and, and there was always a niggling thing about me that things were a little bit too safe for me and I quite liked my life to be a little bit more edgy so I did what to me made total sense was to spend 50,000 euros on a, on a boat as opposed to you know, investing in a house or something like that. But let me come back because, because I want to be very specific <laughs> and scientific about this. You read a book and that book was the starting point that you went, yeah, I can do this. Let's, yeah, is that correct? that's absolutely right. Yeah, so I read this book called Salt, Sweat and Tears by, by a man named Adam Rackley and it, uh, it was about him rowing the Atlantic and it gave a great history um, into, the, into ocean rowing and the first people who did it and, and all that. And yeah, I suppose going back to that spark, that sort of inspiration, um, it just it happened in that moment. I was actually at work inside a diving chamber. I spent 30 days inside these little chambers. So you have to try and uh, focus on what you're going to be doing when you get out of there. And uh, yeah, I had that spark then, and I just I, I, so I got that buzz you, inside me. Yeah. So you're going to go for it, and you decide then to take the insecure road route uh, rather than having the house and the 2.1 kids and living happily ever after. You decided. I'm going to put that money into a boat. Yeah, yeah. Was there any seed of doubt at any stage? Was, did your voice come in, your voice come in and say, listen, Gavin, well, on, be like the normal? I think, you know, when you have that moment, it, it can only last for a second. And then, of course, the sensibility stuff comes in. Sure, you have to think about the cost of that. And, you know, what are you going to do after it? And you've got this job now. Why don't you hold on to that? And, you know, I really just decided to turn the volume down and all that and to go with the spark like I've done in, in, in the past and just trust that. Stop there. How do you turn the volume down on inner talk like that? Is it choosing differently? Absolutely, yeah. You choose, choose to, to, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. To, to not go with that narrative that's, yeah. that's inside, you know, and, and I don't care how, how successful you are or how accomplished you are, everybody has it, you know, yeah, yeah. and I yeah. still have it. I had it every day on the Atlantic, you know, so it's just recognising that, being able to take a step back almost like a Google Maps thing, you know, so you zoom out, you know, mm -hmm. zoom out and look at your life, look at, look at your, your situation and just be aware of those fears and those doubts because they're very insidious. People don't see them. I don't see them a lot of the time. And it takes that moment of zooming out and looking in and being able to say, hang on a sec, that is affecting my decision making. That's affecting the course of my life. So you feel the fear of doing it anyway, pretty much. So you have your 50 grand, you're putting it into your boat, you have your big dream of going across the Atlantic. Yeah. Tell them what happens next because what, what he's going to have inside information on this. So this guy is another huge, huge dream. Uh, you have no team. Uh, you have a boat, 50k. That's about it. Yeah. So what do you need, and what happened? And tell me where it happened. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I'm not an oarsman, so I had to learn how to row. Um, you know, there's a lot of technical knowledge in, in regards to the boat. I hadn't a clue what I was doing, but I had this uh, very nice new boat, and um, I was just sort of hoping things would fall into, get, fall into place. And I suppose from what's happened to me in the past and the evidence that's been presented to me with my life in the past is that doors will open, you know, and that's exactly what happened. You know, I met a guy um, on the slipway in Renville um, who, is, uh, who became a very good friend and a very important part of the row and became the, the, the sort of the, the manager of everything for me and, and, and guided me along. He's a sailor, he'd sailed the Atlantic, he's an engineer, um, his name's Henry and he, he's subsequently, well, he's, he's had cancer and it's, it's, it, was, it actually cut me up inside, um, you know, because he wasn't working at the time um, and he was, he'd, he'd been through 10 operations, um, but he's quite successful in his own field and he was, you know, taking time out and so rightly so. Just, but we're talking about that you go to Red yeah. uh, nothing planned yeah. and they're waiting for you is probably your greatest teacher and probably the key to your success. Absolutely, yeah. I, mean, I just think that's simply amazing, mm. isn't it? You mm. know, nothing planned, the usual situation, teachers appear. That's if it. You're, if you're open for it. So what happens next then? Yeah, so um, basically it's a, a year, 12 months of preparation going into uh, the lead up to the row and uh, 
you know, really challenged me on a lot of levels of organization and sort of being able to, you know, put together project plans and Gantt, Gantt charts and all this sort of stuff, you know, and trying to get things ready in the boat and ready in myself and training to get to the start line, which was probably more challenging in a lot of ways personally than, 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 than the row in a lot of ways. So, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a really tumultuous sort of time. Um, I, wasn't in, I wasn't working. Um, you know, I uh, was made redundant. I you know, spent all this money on the boat. So it was a huge, huge gamble. But at the same time, I was just focused on that, that spark and that idea that doors will open for me in my life, you know, providing I just follow, follow that passion.